expression here. And remember that when all these numbers are and values and uh, variables are all clumped together, all that implies or means is multiplication. So when you have all these stars, that's just extra writing that you don't necessarily have to do. You can clump them all together like this and it means the exact same thing. So the first step we wanna do is we wanna reorganize all of these so that we can start combining like terms. But combine, uh, reorganizing them just makes it easier and cleaner to see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the coefficients with the 10 and the five. I don't see any other coefficients. So we'll do 10 times five. And then we'll do the X's. I like to go in alphabetical order and most people in math and mathematicians will go in order, uh, alphabetical order. So we have X to the third times X. And again, because this is multiplication, this is why we can reorder these. Multiplication without, in multiplication, order does not matter because, it's, because, because of the commutative property. So again, five times seven is the same thing as seven times five and the same thing goes with variables and everything else. Um, and then lastly, we have the y's. Can't forget the y's. Then we have y to the fourth times y. Now we can start simplifying. So we have 10 times five, this is gonna be 50. We have our X's, we can use the product rule. Remember there's always these imaginary ones above anything without an exponent because everything does have an exponent. It's just not always shown. But if it's not there, it means there's an invisible one. And so when we multiply these together, we can simply add the exponents because they have the same base. So X to the third and then add the other exponent. So it's plus one. And then we have the y's. And we have y to the fourth. And again, the same thing applies because we're multiplying two values with the same base. We can add their exponents together. And then lastly, all I have to do is simplify the exponents. So we have 50 times x, three plus one is to the fourth. And four plus one is to the fifth. And this is our final answer for the third one. Any questions on how I did that? Um, but so I'm, I, I don't know if we're gonna have enough time to go through all of them. That's why I was trying to only pick one. Um, but this, these, these same order will be applied to all of these. So you're gonna wanna combine like terms or reorganize first and then combine like terms and then use the product rule by adding exponents with the same base. Um, they, I, I would, but there's just not enough time to go over all of them. Um, but almost Basam. I think it, I think it's just the product rule might be, might be uh, adding the, the wrong ones. But I would say try and follow this and follow this these step by step if you can do that. So organ, reorganize, this is the first step. Start the product rule and then fully simplify. And those would be the steps I would try to follow. Um, if you, you don't necessarily have to do this order, there are multiple ways to, to get the same answer. But if you are getting wrong answers, it might be better to try and solve it this, in this order. Um, so the last X and Y, uh, right here, these these extra ones. So they, they end up becoming these plus ones at the end. Because when you do product rule, you add the exponents. So this was x to the third, this was x to the first, because there's always an imaginary or invisible one that's there. And you simply add the exponents together when you multiply with the same base. And this, this rule will be used in some other examples. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open the breakout rooms again for you to go out there. And I'm gonna go over quotient rule and the power rule, but they still utilize some product rule within it. Some of them are kind of combined with multiple rules. So I will go over this again, um, but for the sake of time, I'm gonna go ahead and send you all out to breakout rooms um, and I'll be stopping by and checking progress. So I'm gonna stop sharing. And again, so work on the second slide for your room and it should say quotient rule and begin working on that. If you, again, also, if you finish early, go ahead and start working on the next few slides. No, no worries there. The more you get done, the more you practice, the better. So if you do finish early, I saw a few of you already doing that. So great job. Um, if you do finish early, start working on the next slides.
and hopefully you can finish all this by the end of class. So I'm gonna open up breakout rooms and I'll see you all in your rooms shortly. So this is the quotient rule. Is there any one in particular that anyone wants me to go over? I'm gonna pick a random one to go to go over, but if there's one in particular you want me to go over, I can choose that one. The last one? Okay, I think I got three left for the last one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the last one. So this one is a little tricky. You're not gonna see this type of question on your quiz, so don't worry too much. This is just extra, extra practice. I uh, wanted to give, you know, one of this a little bit harder for practice since we're only practicing. Um, so don't worry too much about this one, but it is important that you know it regardless. So we are gonna start by, just like we do with the other one, uh, reorganizing, like just, just like we did with the product rule. We're gonna reorganize the top though, because this is a lot, right? So let's go ahead and reorganize this top part. So we're gonna reorganize by like terms because we're eventually we're gonna combine like terms. So we have the coefficients 10 and three, so let's go ahead and do that, 10 times three. And then we have our x's. We have x to the sixth and x to the negative third. So this will be times x to the sixth times x to the negative third. And then lastly, we have our y's times y cubed. And then all over four y, we can't forget about that, okay? So now we can start simplifying some of this and combining like terms. So 10 times three is 30. And then X to the sixth times X to the third. Remember, if you have the same base, you're gonna add your exponents together when you're multiplying them. But because we have a negative value, what is six plus a negative? Do you end up adding or subtracting that three? Am I missing a value? Oh, I forgot about the two. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Can't forget about that. Um, okay. Well, then I forgot. Let's um, let me erase that two. What was that a negative three? And let's put it at the front. It says this was negative three. Let's put it over here. Sorry, let me get rid of this chat. And let's add the two up here because it's gonna be in the coefficients anyways. So I wanna keep it with the coefficients. Thank you for catching that. This would have ended up being a very wrong answer. So instead we have two times 10, which is 20. 20 times three is 60. So this is actually 60. Then X to the sixth, uh, sorry. And we got distracted here, but because we're still adding these exponents together, except the only difference is there's a negative value there. And so what happens if I do six plus negative three? Am I gonna end up minusing that three or adding that three? Minus, I see uh, Jesus, you got the minus, yep. So if you ever add a negative value, it's the same thing as subtracting it. So we're gonna end up with, six minus three. It's the same, it's still the product rule on top. Um, there is another method to go about doing this if you wanted to do it that way. It is up to you, but this is just the way I'm doing it right here. You can also move this to the bottom and rewrite it as X to the positive three, because if you ever have a negative exponent, that means flip it to the bottom, or if it's on the bottom already, flip it to the top and then make it positive. But it's up to you. This is the way I'm doing it. I'm not doing all that just for simplicity's sake, okay? Um, but then we have y to the third. So we, we did our coefficients, which we got 60. We've done our x's, which we get x to the sixth minus three. And now we just have our y's, but there are no other y's on top. So we leave it as y to the third. However, we do have, we do have some y's in the bottom. And we're left with four to the y, or four y, not to the y. All right, now here we can start simplifying some of these things. I'm gonna write over here just cause I'm out of room at the, moment, at the moment. So we have our 60 divided by four. That's going to be 15, sorry, 15. And that, so 60 divided by four, so we can simplify that. 
And then we have x to the six minus three, six minus three is three. So that's x to the third, six minus three is three. So x to the third. And then we have y to the third divided by y. Remember, there's always an imaginary one here. And we can use our quotient rule to subtract three from the one because they have the same base. And so we have three minus one. Again, because there's always an imaginary or invisible one above any value if there isn't an exponent already there. And then we simplify this final value and we're left with 15 x to the third to the y, or no, times y, I don't know why I keep saying that, squared. Three minus one is two. This is your final answer for the third question. Okay, yep, Eliza, yeah. So another thing which you could have done was instead of just uh, doing the product rule here, what you could have done for the negative exponent value is you could flip this whole thing to the bottom and make it positive. So if it's down here, it'd be x to the third. And he's again, anytime you have a, and it would be, it would be uh, multiplied. So you would have, in this case, you would have x to the third times four y or four y times x to the third. Either way, the order doesn't matter. But um, if you flip it down, it becomes a positive exponent. If you if it's negative on the bottom and you flip it up, it becomes a positive exponent. You could also make it negative if you wanted it to be negative. Any of these could, could become negative if you wanted to. Flip it to the bottom, that becomes x to the negative sixth. It does not change the, the actual uh, result of the values. Um, so yeah, that is it. Um, we don't have a lot of time, only a few minutes left. Um, we're at, well, Basam, we're gonna be working on the actual quiz tomorrow, but I would strongly suggest keep working on these. Um, and uh, yeah, Jane, yeah, uh, we still have a little bit of time left. Um, so what I'll say is I'm gonna send everyone out to breakout rooms to, well, actually, sorry. Yeah, there's only two minutes left before everyone has to start cleaning up. So what I'll say is I'll actually go over one of the power rules while we still have a little bit of time. And just so that we can at least see it. And if you have any questions, let me know as I do it or at the end, whatever, whatever way you want to do it. Um, so I'll just go over this really quickly. Um, is there one in particular, someone, because I know a few groups have gone ahead. Um, is there one in particular that you want me to go over? The second, middle, okay, we'll do the middle. So the quiz tomorrow, because I know some you're asking, I'm sure a lot of you guys are uh, curious. There's only gonna be one question for product rule, quotient rule, power rule, uh, cube root, and cube root. And because we didn't have enough time for cube and square root, I'm gonna try to, I'm still thinking about that because we didn't really have time to go over it today. Um, but really quickly, I'm gonna go over this but it's definitely gonna have those first three. And I'll get back to you. You know, they'll definitely know um, if it's gonna have square or cube root beforehand, but um, we'll see. But for this first one, um, what you wanna do is because this is the power rule, we can't add these, okay? And that goes for all of these. I just wanted to show this one's the simple one to quickly show because there is no base here with this second, with this, uh, second exponent value. There's no base there. The, the product rule only works, you can only add these together with the product rule when there's the same base, but there is no base on this second exponent. And so what this means is that this isn't x to the third times x to the third. This is x to the third times x to the third times x to the third. It's to the third power. It's x to the third times itself three times. That's what this means. And so now if you wanted to, you could do the product rule because you have same base, same base, same base, all being multiplied. So three plus three plus three would be nine. This would be X to the ninth. Now, or you could just use the power rule and remember that whenever you have a value with an exponent and in a, with inside a parenthesis and there's a power, it's to a power, all you have to do is multiply the powers. So it's similar to the product rule, but instead of adding, you multiply. And so in this case, three times three is the same thing as nine. And that's how you can either use the, pro the power rule or you can do the product rule by expanding it out. However, the power rule is faster and that's why we're teaching you the power rule. 
So we can take that same approach to the second one. We're about out of time. Um, yep. So I'll just quickly try to show what this would look like. But you would you would put everything, multiply every exponent in this parenthesis by two, because that that's what the power was. Except in this case, there was only one exponent value. In this one, there are one, two, three, four different exponent values. Because remember, two has an invisible one, right? So we're going to multiply that by two. X to the third, third power. We're going to multiply that by two. X has an invisible one. That's going to be multiplied by two. And then Y squared times two, because every exponent will be multiplied by two. Then you simplify, two squared is four. Three times two is six, so this is x to the sixth. I'm going a little fast, sorry, because I know we don't have a lot of time. So if it's a little fast, I'm sorry. Uh, one times two is two, so this is x squared. And then we have two times two is four, so y to the fourth. And then we can combine these x's with the product rule to fully simplify it, and then we have x to the eighth, because six plus two is eight. And then we have y to the fourth. And we can't do anything else because x's and y's can't be combined. They have to have the same base. Obviously, coefficients can't be combined with the variables. And so this is our final answer. OK. It is two minutes left. Again, I'm sorry we did not get a chance to go over the square roots. Um, I'm hoping that we're all comfortable with them. If not, uh, I'll speak with Mrs. Aldis and see what we decide to do as far as if we should include this or not. Um, but you will know before before the quiz uh, tomorrow. Um, any questions? Mrs. Aldis, you have anything for them before they head out? Okay. All right. I know some of you have to go and clean 